What's going on ladies and gentlemen? This video is about taking a small space, whether it's a nook, little corner area in your basement, whatever the case may be, and turning it into a home office. You know, home offices are big today. Everybody's working from home. This here used to be a little space for me. I'm gonna turn this into an office, okay? Um, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna lay out your, uh, your, your plan here. Lay out the uh, office, the way you wanna put a desk or whatever. This, and this, because this is such a small space, I am going to put a floating desk in. I'm gonna build one. And I gotta do some uh, patching, some compound patching. And I have a crack here along the wall. I never put tape. I'm gonna do that right. We're gonna take these pictures off the wall and we're gonna try to lay this room out the best we can for a home office. Um, I did install this pocket door years ago. Um, this wall was all added, okay? Um, that should have been a video, but I never made one. See how it came out a little bit? So it's nice. It's not a bad little space. It's gonna be private for me. So let me get to it. I'm gonna get a pry bar. First thing we're gonna do is rip all this baseboard out. When you are removing baseboard, you have some of this cord around down here. What you wanna do is you wanna put your pry bar up against the cord around, and you wanna tap that hammer. You wanna tap it in place, and you can lift up on that. Because sometimes people are nailing it right to the floor. Have to get it off that way. All right, and then again, back, left, and right. All right, after going and taking out all the nails, do have some damage here. You want to take a knife, you want to go around and scrape, go all the way around the room, and make sure you get all the nails out. Make sure it's flat everywhere. All right, once you get it all smooth, break out all these pieces here. Go around the room and scrape. It's okay if you mess up the wall a little because you're going to be compounding over it. Right, to prepare your uh, compound here to do some sheetrock patching, you're going to need a drill. And remember, don't use an impact. You need an adjustable chuck at the end because this mixer doesn't have an impact connection to it, you know, where you click it on. Uh, wait a minute. we got somebody here on the job today. Sonny! What do you say, Sonny? What do we need? We're going to need the mixer, yeah. Where's the drill? There's the drill. See, he knows his stuff. He's smart. All right, first thing we're going to do, obviously, is open up the can. Or this little, uh... Let me open it up. Hold on a second. The reason I say we got to mix this, it's been sitting in my trailer for a little bit. And it's not super hard, but it's not soft, so we're going to... Put this on the drill. We're gonna get in there and we're gonna mix this stuff up like it's new. A little bit of water. I'm gonna see what it's like, the consistency after doing it for about a minute or so. And if I gotta add water, I will. If not, we're good to go. So stick it in there. And get it going. No, Sonny, get out of there. Get down at the bottom. Work your way in a circle. A nice little pattern. Don't lift it up too high out of the bucket, you'll spray it all over the wall. Come up slowly, and then start working your way back down into it. You don't need to drill on high, but you want to mix this up. So when I get down into the bottom, you can feel where it's a little thick, and then come back up. And go easy. And do this for a good two to three minutes. M finish mixing with your uh, mixer. You want to put that in water. If you got another bucket, I don't have one on site. You got to make do. Bam. Okay. Iced tea. It was empty. Cut the top off. And yeah, it's just sitting in there. Okay. Whatever. So let that sit. Let it soak so it doesn't harden. Because this way it'll be good for the next time. All right. What we're going to need is I like to use a hop. Okay, you hold it, put this stuff on top. Some people like to use a tray. I don't like the tray. Tray for small jobs if I'm mixing some, some pre-mixed stuff, but if I'm working right out of this, I like to use the hawk. Um, what you're gonna need is a scooper, okay? Some guys will just reach in with their four inch or six inch blade and scoops them out. This makes it a little bit easier. Get some out, boom, put it on the hawk. Then I, I usually use a six or an eight inch knife. 
uh, depending on what I'm working with. All right, so let me take these pictures off. Let me throw some tape on that wall where the seam is. We're going to see what we can do over here. Maybe throw some tape down. It's going to be covered by baseboard, so I'm not 100% concerned about that. But I still want to seal it. So what you want to do is you want to run a bead of your compound down the crack. All right, if you look back, yeah, it looks like a window. There used to be a window there. I patched it, sealed it up. But I didn't tape it. It was a quick job, obviously, when you're doing stuff for your own house. You cut corners, but the cracks came through. So throw your bead all the way around. And we're going to place our tape inside. And when you're done putting the uh, tape in, you want to get out as much of the compound out from underneath as possible. You got to scrape it. You start from the middle, you scrape up, and then you go from the middle, you scrape down, and you get it out. You don't want any, you don't want any bubbles. Okay, first day is finished. We're going to let this sit. We're going to let it dry tomorrow. I'm going to come in because I was scraping it pretty good. Um, we'll have a little bit of sanding, then I'm going to do another coat. And uh, two coats should be fine here. So here we are the next day. It's still, some of these spots needed more uh, compound than normal, so it's still drying. What are you doing, Sonny? All right, he's checking it out. We're going to let this dry. In the meantime, today I'm going to take some measurements, because I'm going to design this uh, L-shaped, custom-made uh, desk, okay? We're going to take some measurements from left to right. We're going to come down this way a little bit and uh, we'll take it from there. You enjoying the beautiful day, son? All right, so the next day is here. We're going to do some sanding. A lot of guys use uh, sanding blocks. They'll use a, uh, a sanding block on a stick to reach uh, areas you can't reach. What I like to use when I want to get it done quick I grab this guy right here. That's right, my palm sander, the rigid. I'll throw 120 grit. All right, so I got the mask on. If you can, close the door, close the door. We're gonna get all this edging. We're gonna hit this with sandpaper. With my sander, we're gonna do it quick. finished you can see how much wider it is where the tape was I'm gonna do a little light sanding I'm gonna use a block okay you see here if you look up close you just want to get those imperfections out up and down a little bit okay I got as much as I could off when I'm skim coating that's nice nice and smooth right there all right the room's all prepped and ready for paint i'm not too concerned about cleaning the floor here if you look it's a nice hardwood floor but if you see it's a small room and it goes left to right what i'm going to do is get the vinyl and i want to start from the threshold and go straight across it just gives the room it'll make it look a feel a little bit bigger than it is this it's always a good idea keep an extra you know keep some left over for touch-ups and I'm glad I had this. What I do is get one of these. It's a five dollar mixer. Hook it up to your drill. You can see there it's been sitting a while. You want to mix this paint up nice. Put it in. You can see look at all it's like oil or whatever. And mix it up. Sit here for about a minute or two. Sit here for about two or three minutes. And mix it up. Alright second coat's done. It's got to dry once it's dry. You can see it's still wet. And then we're gonna uh, do the floors. I went with a life proof, 100% life proof, 0% worries, kid. That's what I need. I, I don't need any more worries in my life. Wear protection backed by a lifetime warranty. Come on, it's lifetime. Where are you gonna go and get a lifetime warranty, kid? And look at that. Waterproof, scratch resistant, okay? Lifetime blah 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 and it's a 10-year commercial. So if you got this stuff in a commercial building They give you 10 years for the wear and tear. That's pretty damn good. All right It can be installed in extreme temperature rooms So if you have a room a shed or a building out back you don't have any heat or air conditioning This floor will do fine. No warping none of that crap and I went with 
color called Buckhorn Gray Oak. It's gray, it's in the gray family. If you know me, I like the gray colors, kid, like the wall here. Buckhorn Gray Oak, it's got grain, it's got some dark grain in it. Let's see, we're gonna have to pop this open. This is obviously the back, the back part. It comes with backing, so you don't have to put any underlayment down. Let's take a piece out and see what it looks like. All right, there you go, look at that. Nice grain to that. It's a gray, but it's got some dark color in it. It's a little bit nicer, I think, color than the one I put in the man shed. Take a look at my uh, previous videos. I did another location with this, but this is a little bit darker. Looks nice. Let's just see what it looks like up against this corner here. Remember, when you place these floors in, you got to give it a space here, all right, because this floor moves. It literally sits right on top of your existing floor, and it moves, so you have to... We have spacers we're going to put in, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. All right, when installing these uh, vinyl flooring planks here, <clears throat> you're going to need some basic tools. Number one, you need a radio, okay? If you're by yourself, put, get a radio, all right? If not, use your phone. All right, here you go. You want to use a square because you're going to be cut. you got to mark some straight edges. You're going to use this tool here. It'll grab in the corners. You bang. I don't know what the name of this is, but... To get tight stitch, you put it in the corner and you're going to bang this way, and that thing will pull the plank closer. We got some spacers here. You're going to need to lay out some spacers. If you're new at this, you got to put like a quarter inch spacing around the room, and these spacers will sit basically on the edge like this. You push it against the wall, and you got a space. This way, uh, these floors move if you butt it right up against the wall. You're going to have buckling, you're going to have issues, all right? So you need the spacers, you're going to need a rubber hammer, mallet here, you're going to need the uh, block, the block with these edges. What they do is they grab on the side of this so you can bang it, you know, left or right, you know, get a tight fit in the seams. All right, so those are your tools, and you're going to need something to cut this with. Me, I'm going to use, just because I only have a few cuts, I'm probably going to use the circular saw, the hand circular saw. Usually you'd use a chop saw for a big job. But just a few cuts, I'm going to use the uh, circular saw. When you get to an issue like this, where you want to slide this underneath the trim and the casing, you don't have the space. What you do is you put this up against here, and we're going to grab the multi-tool, and we're going to go straight in and score all this out and clear the space. And when we clear all this out, we'll be able to slide this piece right underneath. So put it up against here. Okay, hold it firm. And then you're going to take your thing and you're going to plunge cut right in. plunge cut it come under here take all this out okay then you take your piece and it should be able to slide right in see that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna plunge cut the corner sheetrock so we could slide it in because I want to have this halfway through so when we put our strip in our transition strip it'll be okay it'll look good so let me get to cutting that sheetrock out and we'll slide it in once you have it cut all the way through, you take your piece and you slide it right in. So it looks nice and neat, okay? And we're going to continue that across the room. Let's put our spacers in and that'll be it. can't emphasize enough, the first course is very important. You want it on the money, you want it jointed tightly, okay? And you want these spacers in, even where the two pieces meet. If this is off, your first, your first row is off, you're going to have a problem going across. So take your time, put your spacers in. One thing I forgot to mention, when you start your second course, you have to stagger your joints. So if you look here, my joint, the first one is in the middle. And if I, if I back up, you'll see that piece is in the middle. So I'm going to take a solid piece, cut it in half, 
I'll put one piece up there and one piece here. You want to keep these joints staggered because if you line them all up, it's just going to look like crap going across the room. You'll see it. So stagger your joints too. Very important. It's as easy as marking it with your square. Okay. Pencil mark. Circular saw right across. And make a nice straight cut. This angled iron piece is made to get into the corners with the lip. Put it down. Bang this way. And you tighten up your seam. The block is meant, if you see that, that's an open seam right there. From far away you don't see it, but you gotta put this block, it's got an edge, and you got the edging of the trim right here on the top, so you wanna put that block there, and you wanna tap it. Obviously you would have your hand on one on the top, and then you tap it. And then it brings that joint you can't even see it. it brings it right together nice and tight all right now that it's finished <clears throat> the transition piece from this new to the old this is the best thing i could find at the depot with the color it up again you can see where it's, you can see where it slides take your multi-tool blade and we're going to mark it and cut it straight in and we're going to measure from left to right. Anytime applying an adhesive or any kind of a sticky backing, get some wipes, give it a nice clean finish so the adhesive will stick. You want to do is you want to measure. You want to go, it's going to go underneath this about a half of an inch. Okay. Because we're going to ride that piece underneath. And come all the way over here. We're about and we're gonna write it underneath there also. It's about 31 and three quarters. So you want to mark it, line it up at the end, and then mark it over here 31 and three quarters. Make a line, and we're gonna take I'm gonna grab my grinder real quick, the octane, take it outside, and we're gonna cut that line. Pieces in it looks good. I'm inside the office. It looks good, not bad. And we open it up. And we got the floor on the other side. Alright, what I did was I measured all the corners, wrote it down on a piece of paper, went down and cut the trim. If you need to know how to cut, trim, and measure, go to another video or I think I have them, but I'm not gonna go through it here. So I got my pieces of trim up. This is my go-to right here. It's a DeWalt 15 gauge. It's a little overkill. I could get an 18, but this one works fine. I just use a shorter nail and I'm gonna tack it in place. When I get to small corner pieces like that, I'm gonna use some glue. And because this is a pocket door, there's nothing to nail it to. I'm gonna use my extension poles. I'm gonna put some glue on the back side of that, put a two by four on that side and put one on the far end. And I'm gonna extend it I'm going to use this as a kind of like a, uh, a brace and I'm going to stay keep it overnight and that's how you put trim up against the wall you can't nail to get some of these sticks use some glue stick it up on the wall all right that concludes a remodel for a home office walls done trim floor next thing I'm going to do is a custom sized desk for this area so stay tuned for that video how to build a desk in a small space on a budget kid all right but it came out nice. Walls are sweet. Sheetrock work is done. And uh, trim. Trim work is done today. The floor is done. The transition piece. Windows look good. All right, we're all set. This is how you remodel a home office. So if you have a little space in the basement, anywhere. This used to be a, a screened-in porch at one time. And I put the wall up, okay? Pocket doors, all that in, in stages. So thanks again for watching. And uh, what do we got to do? Uh, oh, yeah. Yo, Sonny! Sonny! Where the hell did he go? Sonny! Yes, yeah, Sonny.